chemotherapy, a test of will. If there's one thing that truly tested my resolve, it was chemotherapy. Before I began, I had heard all the stories, some hopeful, others heartbreaking, about what chemotherapy could do to the body. People spoke of nausea, fatigue, hair loss, and even long-term damage to organs. Some warned me about the emotional toll it could take, while others reassured me that it was just one more step toward survival. But no matter how much I tried to prepare myself, nothing could have braced me for the reality of living through it. Chemotherapy became one of the greatest tests of willpower I would ever face. When my doctors first recommended chemotherapy, they framed it as a necessary evil. My cancer was a rare type of cancer, aggressive, and while surgery alone might not be enough to rid my body of the disease, chemotherapy had the potential to target whatever was left behind. I knew, intellectually, that it was the best course of action, but knowing something and accepting it are two different things. I feared what chemotherapy would do to me, not just physically, but mentally. Would I still recognize myself by the end of it? The first round of chemotherapy felt surreal. As I sat in the clinic, hooked up to an IV, I couldn't help but feel like I was watching it all unfold from outside my body. The drugs that were being pumped into my veins were meant to kill the cancer, but they were also attacking the rest of me. The irony was not lost on me, how something so destructive could also be my best chance at life. It was a strange dance between trust and fear. I trusted the doctors and the science, but I feared the consequences of what was being done to my body. The side effects came quickly. The nausea, which I had hoped to avoid, hit me hard. Eating became a challenge, and even the simplest meals turned into battles with my stomach. Fatigue settled in, not just the kind that makes you want to nap, but the kind that drains your energy to the point where getting out of bed felt like climbing a mountain. I wasn't just tired. I was exhausted in ways I didn't know were possible. It wasn't long before my hair began to thin, and eventually, clumps of it started to fall out. I had always known this was a possibility, but watching it happen was devastating. It was as if my body was offering up visible proof of the war that was happening inside me. More than the physical toll though, chemotherapy tested my mental strength. There were days when I questioned whether I could keep going. Every round felt harder than the last, and each new symptom wore me down. I had moments where I resented the treatment, wondering if it was truly worth it to feel this way, even if it meant surviving. There were dark moments where I contemplated the toll it was taking on my family, on the people who loved me, and had to watch me go through this. Sometimes the emotional burden felt heavier than the physical one. But here's the thing about chemotherapy. It's not just a battle against cancer. It's a battle with yourself. Every day you endure it, you're proving to yourself that you can take more than you ever thought possible. Every round of treatment is a test of willpower, forcing you to dig deeper and find strength you didn't know you had. I found myself clinging to small victories, days when the nausea was manageable, or when I could take a short walk without feeling like my body was betraying me. Those moments became reminders that I was still here, still fighting, still me. The support I received during chemotherapy became my lifeline. My family, my friends, my church, and even the medical staff played a crucial role in keeping me grounded. On the hardest days, when I felt like giving up, they were there to remind me that I wasn't fighting alone. It's easy to get lost in the fog of chemotherapy, to feel like your world has shrunk to a hospital room and a schedule of medications. But having people around me who understood the magnitude of what I was going through made all the difference. Their love and encouragement gave me the will to keep going, even when I wasn't sure I could. I want to add that my church, the Cincinnati Chinese Christians Church, prayed for me every day during my chemo treatment weeks. Many brothers and sisters sent me the Bible verses to remind me that they were there for me and God was walking with me. 
As the weeks passed and the chemotherapy sessions continued, something remarkable happened. I began to adapt. My body, though battered, started to adjust to the treatment. The side effects became more predictable, and I learned how to manage them. I found small ways to take care of myself, whether it was sipping ginger tea to settle my stomach or practicing mindfulness to stay present. While chemotherapy never became easy, I began to feel a sense of control again. I was no longer just a passive participant in my treatment. I was actively engaging with it, finding ways to cope and survive. Looking back now, I realize that chemotherapy, as grueling as it was, taught me some of the most important lessons of my life. It taught me resilience in a way that nothing else could. It showed me that even in the darkest moments, there is always a flicker of hope to be found if you look for it. It reminded me that the human body is capable of enduring incredible challenges, and that the human spirit is even stronger. In many ways, chemotherapy was a test of who I was at my core. It stripped away the superficial and forced me to confront my own fears and limitations. It was a reminder that life is precious, and that surviving cancer isn't just about defeating the disease, it's about reclaiming your life, your will, and your sense of purpose. Chemotherapy was a test of my will, but it was a test I was determined to pass. The background music is from Serene Music, Superb Nature. You can find it at my YouTube channel. My name is Weeping Kai. Thanks for watching.